We'll get He-Man next time. Oh, um, yeah, I was just testing out the action figures just to make sure they work okay in terms of, you know, playability and stuff before I list them. Um, but that's for a separate video. Uh, I was not playing with them just to play with them, of course. You know, just, just testing them out for the kids. But um, anyway, so this video, though, is actually about comic books. And what I want to talk to you about in, in this video is how to properly pack and ship graded and certified comic books. So I've shown these on my channel before, but if you haven't seen one, uh, this is what they look like. They are put and encapsulated into this plastic slab. It's a hard plastic. Um, while it is pretty strong, if it is not packed properly, this plastic is going to break and it's going to ruin the value of the comic book. And because it is professionally graded, so it is evaluated by people who are experts in looking over the condition of the book, and they grade it on a scale from 0 to 10. Now, a 9.9 .9 is possible and a 10 is possible, but it's extremely rare. Uh, typically, what people are looking for in terms of comic collectors are these 9.8s, and people will proudly display a 9.8. In fact, uh, this issue uh, right here uh, that actually sold tonight for $400, uh, this is Where Monsters Dwell number uh, 35, and this is from 1975, which is my birth year, and it actually sold on my birthday, so I feel a special attachment to this book, and I love monsters, so really appropriate uh, that this one sold today. But this is actually the single highest graded uh, comic book for this issue, for this particular issue in the entire world. There is not a single one that has ever been graded higher than this one. So that allows me to corner the market in terms of price and to be able to sell it high for $400. And I want to make darn sure that this doesn't get damaged uh, to the person who purchased it tonight. So in terms of the dimensions of the comic slab, this one here is about 13 by eight and a half inches. Keep in mind that I am using the company CGC as the example for this video because that's the company that most collectors uh, want to grade and slab their comic book. There are other uh, comic book grading and slabbing companies out there like CBCS and PGX, but a CGC is definitely uh, the one that is the most popular. So that's why I'm using it here. So what we want to do to start off with is we want to find a clear plastic bag to put this in like this. Uh, it doesn't matter what company you use, just make sure it could fit uh, nicely in there to give it just a basic outer level of protection. Now, uh, remember, we want this in a nice, clear plastic bag so that when the person pulls it out, they could see it. That's a, a big experience for a collector is to do an unboxing. So you don't want to put this in something like a plastic grocery bag that you would just, you know, get at the store. You don't want it to have a cheap looking appearance. Remember, people are spending hundreds to thousands of dollars on these books, so they want to have a professional experience when they're opening up and it's important uh, for that for your reputation. So uh, then the next thing we're going to do is we are going to get a bubble mailer to put this in. Now um, it obviously has to be a uh, bigger in size than this. So I am using one that is 14 and a half inches by 11 and a half inches. I happen to be using a uh, U-line here. It's bubble uh, mailer number five and it is a padded uh, you know, mailer. That's why it's called a bubble mailer because you can see here there's these uh, little bubbles uh, inside. They're small bubbles. So uh, if you need to know the product number, it's S-5150. Uh, but again, it doesn't really matter which company you use. You just want to make sure you're using some type of padded uh, mailer. So a bubble mailer. So we're going to just put this right inside. So we've got enough room uh, to keep it nice and protected. And then I'm just going to take this uh, piece of adhesive uh, tape off right here. And I am just going to seal it shut. And so now we are all set with this initial um, basic level of protection. Now, 
what we need to do next is we need to find a box for it. That's right, a box. We do not want to just stick a label on this and ship it out this way. This is not going to be enough protection. It's going to be damaged. If you might say, well, what about putting some cardboard around it? You know, I've talked about this in other videos, cardboard sandwiches, not for this. This is something that is on another level. It's a special level. It's, you know, again, a high priced item and you want to give it the maximum level of protection uh, that you can. All right, so in terms of the box that we're gonna use, we're gonna use this one here, which is a 16 by 12 by four inch box. This one happens to be made by Uline, but you could use any company that you'd like. The key is that the box is strong and sturdy. That's the essential aspect. And notice how the dimensions continue to increase with each layer of protective packaging. So we started off with a slab that was about 13 by eight and a half inches. We put that into a bubble mailer that is 14 and a half by 11 and a half inches. And now that is going in the 16 by 12 inch box because it is important to make sure that you are allowing for protective margins around the product. If not, if you put this in too small of a box and then when it ships out, it's pressing right against the edges, what is inevitably going to happen is that either through mishandling from the postal carrier or as it's going through uh, the plant, uh, it's going to get a pressure exerted on the outside of the box. And if that pressure is big enough, what's going to happen is that the plastic is going to crack. Uh, it could shatter and then there goes that person's investment and there goes whatever investment you had because you are going to be asked to provide a refund. So it is very, very important that you allow for protective margins around your product. And so what we're gonna do, we're not just gonna take this and throw this inside of here because then it's just gonna shake around. You know, you can see here, this is the protective margin I'm talking about. We have that on on all of the sides here. So you could see that uh, here as well. You know, we could run our finger around the edges like that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put some protective uh, packing uh, peanuts right inside of here, and that's going to fill up our void space. So that's gonna be important. So, you know, I'm just gonna use some that I have right here. I just got some in a uh, big, um, you know, bag here, but you know, you could just go out and get them in, in a big, um, you know, a big giant like tower-like bag. Uh, you could get them at local uh, shipping places, uh, packing places. I'm not talking like FedEx or, or UPS. I'm talking about like locally owned companies can do that for you. There's one around here where you could get that, or you could even look online and get some uh, pretty decent prices on this type of stuff. But, you know, all you gotta do is just, you know, dump this stuff right out uh, into the box. And so now, you know, you could see here, there's a whole bunch of packing peanuts in here. So I'll put this up here so you could see it better. But basically what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take this and I'm just gonna nestle it right inside of here like that. Now that's gonna disturb the uh, packing peanuts. If you remember from science, this is called displacement. So <laughs> we are displacing the packing peanuts and then we will just put them uh, back right on top of it. So we are kind of making a sandwich of sorts, but we are making a packing peanuts uh, sandwich. Now, you may find that you have a little bit uh, extra that you might want to uh, take off so you could thin this out a little bit. So I'm just gonna you know, make a few adjustments like that after uh, pressing it uh, down and just maybe take like a few extras out and just you know, toss them into the bag. Uh, but the key is that now, I should be able to close this flap like this, close this flap like this, and close this flap like this, and now I could tape it up. And when I tape it up, and you'll, you know, I'll, I'll do it, I'll tape it up so you can see, but it is not going to move around at all. I'll be quiet for a moment so you don't even, you know, you could just hear the box. It is not moving in there, right? 
that you are not hearing anything moving. I mean, it is completely, completely protected inside of there. Uh, and it's, you know, perfectly positioned in the middle. And because you filled up all the air uh, space in there, it is not going to move around. It is going to stay there. You do not have to worry just as long as you put enough in there. I'm just going to take my tape dispenser here and just going to put the tape on it. All right, so there it is, all taped up, nice and quiet. Major blank. But uh, no, that's how you do it, folks. It is really, really nice and strong and sturdy on the outside and really well uh, protected here on the inside. Uh, this could drop whatever, and uh, the contents in here are going to be nice and safe and secure. So that's how you do it. Just follow those steps, and that is how you properly pack and protect a certified and graded comic book inside one of these plastic slabs. Now, if you want to know more about comic books and reselling comic books, uh, just go to my playlist section, and you will see a whole bunch of videos about comic books. In addition, if you check out my What Sold on eBay videos uh, that I do at the beginning of each month, and I have those also into a playlist section called What Sold on eBay, you will usually see comic books uh, listed uh, somewhere there amongst the top 10 uh, most expensive items that sold in that month. So uh, go in there as well to learn more uh, about the topic. Now, I did go to the flea market today. And I'm going to have a really interesting uh, video about that. I just haven't had a chance to edit it all and put it all together yet. But that is coming soon, hopefully in the next day or two. I hope to have it up before my live show interview on Wednesday night with thrifter, junker, vintage hunter. Say that 10 times fast, but she's going to be there 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Again, Wednesday night. We're going to go over lots of cool vintage items that may look like junk to other people, but they really are treasures that you could resell uh, for a nice profit. So come on by, especially if you're a new reseller. It could really help you uh, develop that eye. And even if you've been doing this for a while, uh, typically when I do these shows, even people who are experienced learn some new stuff. So uh, it'll be a lot of fun. Make sure you hit that bell icon up top for notifications for when I go live. Of course, make sure you hit the like button if you enjoyed this video. Make sure that you subscribe to the channel to support it. Uh, come over to my Facebook group, the Facebook Reselling Resource Center, and come over to my Instagram account. That's at prime underscore time underscore treasure. The links to all that stuff is down below. And I'll see you at the next video, everyone. Take care. Now give me another spin, prime time. How's that? All right, that's good. Now put me down. Good night.